In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is actually a very small form factor computer, and it could be used for a number of different things. And one of the advantages of the Raspberry Pi is how low cost it is. And we can take a look at it here at the website Raspberry Pi. And you can see this is just a diagram of what it looks like. It's really just a very small form factor computer. It runs off an SD card and you could connect a display or inputs or network. And there's the ability to do Wi-Fi with it as well. Now, you may be wondering why I'm talking about the Raspberry Pi when we're really talking about ethical hacking. Well, the reason for that is because what I want to do is I want to be able to have a computer, potentially, that I could just drop into a location. And what I could do with the Raspberry Pi, since it's so small, and there are a number of ways of getting power to it, you may actually be able to drop it into the location of somewhere where you're testing, and you could just have that Raspberry Pi sitting there, and you could potentially gain access to it from the outside, or you could also have it start up and launch a number of tests and fire the results back to you, either via HTTP or via email or some other mechanism. And you can see just how small they really are. And in addition to their size, of course, is their cost. Right here, we've got one for less than $50, and it comes with 500 meg of memory. So there are a lot of advantages or potential uses for the Raspberry Pi when you're doing ethical hacking. Just imagine walking into a meeting with a client and just quietly dropping the Raspberry Pi in place and having it run a number of scans from inside the network. Even better if you could walk into the waiting area and get it installed there and have it do some Wi-Fi scanning or if you could get it plugged into the network because some companies actually have network drops in their waiting area and you could give them a sense of just how weak their security is potentially by dropping this Raspberry Pi in place and may give them a bit of a wake-up call that anybody could actually do something like this. So you may wonder, once you've got the Raspberry Pi in place, how do you get access to it? Well, one thing you can do is using SSH forwarding, and we'll take a look at how to actually SSH forward and then come back in over that SSH forwarding tunnel in the next lesson.